Welcome to the first part of this video tutorial series where we will be building a Sensure Touch login system. Uh, to start off with in this video we won't actually be uh, creating the application just yet. Uh, we're going to have a look at the back end side of things and set up uh, the database and we'll start working on our PHP API. Uh, before we do this, you will need to uh, have a database set up on a server somewhere on the internet. So if you have a website you could use, you could use a free host, it doesn't really matter, but it needs to be uh, publicly accessible from the internet. You can't just set this up on localhost uh, because when you install this device, uh, install the application rather on your device, it's going to need to be able to communicate with this uh, database and if it's sitting locally on the computer you won't be able to do that. So uh, set that up somewhere and we'll go through uh, exactly what we want that database to look like in a second. Um, I'll be using PHP and MySQL for this. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use those technologies if there's a language that you're more comfortable with, uh, you can just use that instead. Uh, it should be pretty easy uh, to adapt as well. There's nothing too crazy that we're going to be doing. Essentially, we're running some queries against a database and returning a JSON stream. So to start off with, we're going to look at the uh, build query uh, for the database table. And we're only going to have one uh, table as well. So just create a file called build.sql and we're going to do create table uh, users and we want to add an ID field that's going to be um, int 11 unsigned not null and auto increment uh, we want an FBID field uh, this is going to be used to store the Facebook ID from Facebook if uh, they use that method to log in. Otherwise, this will just be uh, left blank. <coughs> we want an email field. Uh, we're going to make that varchar again. Uh, set that to 100 and not null. A password field. Again, not null and a session field and that will be used obviously to store the user's session and we'll check against that uh, when we're automatically logging them in and we'll just set the primary key to ID and that is it uh, as far as the database goes this is all we're going to need to do is this one table to store our users uh, if you are taking this a bit further and are using this login system uh, to create a specific application, you'll probably want uh, more tables that store other information. Uh, you can easily extend the users table if you want to include things like a phone number or a country. Uh, you can easily store that information in here. Uh, basically, we just want to add the, uh, the minimal amount that we need, uh, just the stuff that we need to actually get this system working. So once you've done that, uh, create your create your database on your website, uh, run this query, uh, and then uh, basically you're done. That's all, all we need to worry about for the database. Uh, we're going to set up the API as well. So create a file called users.php. And basically the purpose of this PHP file is going to be to sit between uh, application and uh, the database. So our application is going to make requests that will be pointed to this PHP file. Um, the PHP file will figure out what it needs to do and then it might shoot off some requests to the database, it might change some data in there and then it will uh, tell our application what's happened. Uh, it might return something from the database, it might say that it ran some query and it didn't find a match uh, for a username and password and things like that. So to start off with, let's create our opening and closing PHP tags there. And we're just going to create a connection to our database. So we'll do new MySQLi uh, localhost. Uh, it's probably 
what it will be, and then your database uh, username, the database password, and then the name of the database. And we're also going to be supplying a parameter by using the uh, action variable here. So when we uh, make a call to this uh, API, we're going to supply uh, several different actions in the URL, and then we're going to do different things based on what we get. Uh, we won't get too far into that in this video. Uh, we'll expand on this much more in a later one, uh, but essentially we'll just be switching between different actions and then performing different things based on whatever the action is. Uh, the result will be what gets sent back to our application. So just as a default, uh, we're going to create a JSON string that says uh, success false, just so we know that whatever we tried to do uh, didn't work. And then at the end of this file, we're going to echo out that result so our application can pull that in and read what's going on. And in between here, this is where all the magic will happen. We'll have all our different cases and uh, if the user's logging in, we'll run a login query against the database. Um, if they want to create a new account, we'll do that. Uh, but that's the stuff that we'll get into in a later video. Uh, what we do need to do here to get this API set up and working though is supply a few headers. So if you're trying to uh, communicate with a server that's outside of the domain of the application, uh, you'll run into cross-origin resource sharing issues. So basically it's just a security measure um, if you're requesting these things from outside of uh, the domain that you're in. Um, it might not necessarily be uh, something you want, but in this case it is. So basically we just need to say that uh, we're happy for things to be requested from a different origin. So we're going to set access control allow origin uh, to all wildcard. Um, you can specifically set uh, domains here as well if you like. Uh, we also want to set uh, access control allow methods and we want to set that to get post and options. And we want one more header, which is access control allow headers. And we want to allow content type, x prototype version, and x requested uh, with. Okay, and with those set up, everything should work now. So if we set this up, I uploaded it and went to the address. We just get this JSON string for now, the success false. Uh, but in uh, one of the later episodes, we're going to, or rather a tutorial, not an episode, um, we're going to go through different uh, cases and then we're going to modify what this result is based on what we're doing and then our application will pull that in and perform functions uh, in the application. So in the next video, we'll start looking at um, actually building the application and generating it. Uh, but for now, that's all we need to do on the back end side of things. So I'll see you in the next video.